Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill and yep, I am back out in the vegetable garden today. Here it is, the 1st of June, and I thought you might enjoy seeing how our vegetable garden is coming along. So let's explore it row by row. The first bed I wanted to show you is our lettuce bed. I've got several different varieties growing, such as red sails, butter crunch, red romaine, and speckled trout. I love all of these varieties. But, you know, not everything is okay in here because in this row of butter crunch, which must be really tasty, we've got some slug damage. And the point I wanted to make is that if you plant your lettuce too closely, it makes it very easy for slugs to get from one plant to the next. So what I'm going to do is thin out that section and see if we can thwart that problem. I'm also going to keep an eye out for any, of course, and get rid of them if I see them. This next bed is where we're growing green arrow peas. And if you saw my previous video on starting peas in gutters, this is the result. The plants are doing awesome. They have not started blooming yet, but should soon. And you might recall that we used sticks that we wove together to provide them some support so that they don't fall all over the place. In the next bed, we're growing Walla Walla sweet onions. They're getting off to a little bit of a slow start, but they're doing okay. In our potato bed, we're growing Viking purple and bluebell, and they are doing beautifully. I don't have any pest problems, and I'm very excited about them. So the next thing that I'm going to do with that bed is to put a nice mulch over the soil surface, and that is to protect any potatoes growing near the surface of the soil from the rays of the sun. In this bed, I have a grafted sun gold tomato plant, and it's doing pretty well, but it looks like it could use a bit of nitrogen, so I'm going to give it some fertilizer after this. And then I'm growing a bunch of zinnias for cut flowers, those should be great. And I wanted to explain this mess of branches here. I am growing some sunflowers in this bed. And this is my sneaky way to keep quail out of there until the plants are big enough to fend for themselves. Once the plants are a few inches tall, I'll clean up the branches and everything will look nice and tidy. Now we come to the mystery bed. So you're probably wondering, well, what in the world is growing under here? Well, actually, it is beets and Swiss chard. And I mentioned in a previous video that they are very susceptible to leaf miners. So I cover them with floating row cover for the entire season because the plants do not need to be pollinated, but they are so susceptible to leaf miners, and this acts as a physical barrier to keep the adult flies from laying eggs on the leaves. It works great. In this bed, I'm growing carrots and parsnips, and as you can see, the plants are a perfect size now to thin. It is absolutely crucial to thin both carrots and parsnips to a spacing of about three to four inches. That gives them plenty of room to develop an awesome root. In the next row, I have a bed of Tuscan cantaloupes, which are to die for. I started the plants from seed about two weeks before I transplanted them outdoors, which was on about the 10th of May. Now you'll notice that green plastic mulch. That is called solar mulch, and the purpose of it is to increase the soil temperature, which heat-loving crops like cantaloupes absolutely love. I used the solar mulch last year, and it really increased the productivity of the melons that I grew. In the next bed, we've got a great stand of garlic. My husband planted garlic cloves last fall, and we will harvest them once the bottom two pairs of leaves turn brown. Directly to the right of them are shallot plants, and you'll notice some of them have flowers on them already, and we are going to leave those there because we want to save the seeds so we can plant shallots again this fall. I've got two tomatoes growing here side by side for a comparison. This is a sun gold tomato that has been grafted. This is also a sun gold that's not grafted. I noticed both of them have blossoms, but we want to see which one performs better. Now this goofy contraption is my cucamelon rocket. 
If you've never heard of cucamelons, they are related to the cucumber. They are crunchy and they have a citrusy taste and I've been hearing great things about them so I thought I have got to grow them myself. And so you can see there are some small plants in the bottom. Now if you see some peppers in the foreground, just pay no attention to those because a certain spouse of mine has been trying to take over more of my garden space and so he poked in some peppers into this bed. Here's where I'm growing summer squash. I have Claremore, which is a regular type of summer squash, and then I have trombone zucchini, which will climb. And we're using these branches to support them. We're hoping it will work okay, but uh, it's kind of a fun little support. In this next bed, I'm growing broccoli. It's called Early Dividend, and you'll notice it's under a netting, which is called Tulle, T-U-L-L-E. It is a bridal veil netting, and I use it to keep the cabbage butterfly from getting to the leaves where it would want to lay its eggs. And so this works really well as a physical barrier. I like the Tulle because it provides quite a bit of air circulation, which is nice for the plants, and it gives me the opportunity to see what's going going on in there in case there are any kinds of problems developing. In our hoop house, my husband is growing hot peppers, which are doing amazingly well, and sweet peppers on the other side. Now both of the beds are covered with that solar mulch, again to raise the soil temperature. But what happened is we were having a problem with slugs trying to eat the sweet peppers that you're looking at right now. And so my husband had to remove the mulch temporarily and look what a difference it made for the growth. Again, the hot peppers, wow, and the sweet peppers, which hopefully will catch up soon. This is our famous bean arbor. We've got four trellises in a row and the beans climb up and over the pathway, which works great. Now we've got Spanish musica growing and you can see it's a race because we've got some that are really heading up there. Once they grow a little bit taller, they're really going to start leafing out and producing. The next three beds are empty because we haven't planted them with corn yet, but that is the plan. We're actually starting the corn a little bit later for a later harvest. And then right next to them is our bed of copra onions. Those keep for a really long time. I mean eight to ten months, which is fabulous. They are growing beautifully, so I'm very happy with that. And then the last bed in this third row is a type of honeydew melon called Ha Ogan. This right up on them sounded really good and so we decided we would give them a try this year. And again, they are in solar mulch as well. And just in case you're wondering about these two large beds, we are growing golden raspberries and red raspberries here. And oh, I can't wait. They are already blooming and the bees are buzzing, so hopefully we'll get a good harvest. In this bed, I'm growing winter squash, and I am so tickled with how beautifully they're growing. I started the plants indoors in late April. I transplanted them out into this bed about the 10th of May. And you'll notice that there is solar mulch on the bed, again, to increase the temperature of the soil. But I went a step farther by putting hoops over the bed covering it with floating row cover, which made it like a little greenhouse. That was on for two weeks, and look at these plants. They are just absolutely gorgeous. So it really made a big difference. Now in the next bed, I've got tomato plants. It's primarily paste tomatoes for making sauce and ketchup, but I also have a new type of a tomato that I'm growing. It's kind of a beefsteak type from Burpee called Atlas Hybrid. And in the last bed, you'll notice it's empty, but we'll be planting corn in there in a few weeks. In this last bed, which is located on the south side of our greenhouse, we are growing asparagus and also a couple of hardy figs. One is Chicago hardy and the other is Violette de Bordeaux. We planted them last year and they made it through our harsh winter here in a zone 5 climate. So we are very excited about this and anxious to see how they do. I do hope we are going to get some figs this year because that would be so cool. 
I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of our vegetable garden. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in a week.